Hello and welcome to Off the Shelf Reviews. Uh, today I'm joined by Ian and John. Hello. And today we're going to talk about 1981 movie Das Boot. Uh, das Boot is a World War II submarine movie and uh, actually made uh, in Germany mm. and uh, di by director Wolfgang Peterson who um, uh, went on to make uh, make some other great films uh, like Never Ending Never Story. Story. Uh, he also Poseidon. made Poseidon, uh, Perfect Storm, Air Force One. So, you know, he, he's got some, some hits and misses in there yeah, and yeah. still very entertaining films. Mm -hmm. But um, this is a World War Two movie. And one of the biggest differences is that it is from the German side of things. Yeah. It it doesn't necessarily follow Nazis. It's, you know, it's, it's the sailors. And yeah. They're doing yeah. their job. It's and the stories of the seamen on board the U-96 going out to destroy convoy ships from the for the allies this film uh the second time i've watched this film and i was worried about watching it for the second time because it, the first time watching it depressed me and and I, I I don't mean that in a bad way, but you actually live with these men on board this U boat, and it's it's a hard life, you know. From the opening sequence where you you're in the you're in the club with all these Germans and they're just drinking their sorrows away because they've got to go out and they've got to go out to the Atlantic, to the to going through the uh, going through the harbor to get to the boat, sailing out, close those hatches. That's it. You're stuck with them. Yeah. It's a very, very claustrophobic film and it is it's all it's all seems like it's on one set mm. and it's the, the camera angles just flow through the entire submarine. I want this instrument accessible. Come on, through here, Lieutenant. Wake up, you two <laughs> company. <laughs> Morning, Lieutenant. Morning, Lieutenant. Morning, gentlemen. So, this is where the petty officers bunk. Sleeps twelve men. It means two guys have to share a bunk, one sleeps while the other's on duty. And so uh, when one man comes off watch, he climbs to do the other man's stink, yeah. right? <laughs> one of the reasons why I think Das Boot is probably one of the greatest war movies ever made yeah. is, I mean, I, I really think it's up there, it is, it is that good. It's, um, it's the fact that when you're watching it, um, you're, you're not reminded that these are the Germans. They're going out to do their duty. Their their job is to go out to the Atlantic and destroy Allied convoys. And it's but their story about them going out. Though half of them know that they're, half of them don't want to go out because they might not come back alive. And they each know the reasons why they're going out there. And Jurgen Prachnow, who plays the captain, is stunning in this film. <laughs> Well, men. All set. All set, sir. Each one of his scenes, he just tries to keep each one of his men under control so that they can do their job. But they just, they just haven't got the materials. You know, they, they haven't got the spy planes like the British have. They haven't got the destroyers with the sonar tracking. I mean, there's, there's one scene um, where he, uh, he's listening to the propaganda radio. The propaganda ministry will love it. Music we need. Think our Hitler youth leader might put a record on for us? Uh, don't make me puke with that stuff. Hey, now we are in the Royal Navy. And like like we said, it's all in German, so you can hear this this guy really giving this oh, almighty speech over the radio. And Jürgen Prack now just sits there and just says, you know, how can you say that about Winston Churchill? He he's not a drunk. He's not a paralytic. They are they are kicking our asses basically, mm. and they stick the record on. A simple record won't make you into the king of England, number one. <laughs> it just it just plays that point and. 
that for me lifted lifted my morale just enough to be like, right, okay, let's stick with the captain. Let's yeah. go out there. Let's see what we can find. It made them more like people. You didn't hate them as Germans. Yeah, you didn't, you didn't hate them as the enemy. Them, yeah. You kind of got to appreciate, you know, how horrible, you know, the war was yeah. for them too. And, you know, it they do have an admiration for the British as well, and they say it a couple of times. Definitely, so. definitely. Well, it, it really gave a soul to the German army for me because... Uh, growing up in history classes and uh, what we're taught is the British had these envoys that would be going between America and England with all their equipment and all that stuff. Yeah. And they were ambushed by these German U-boats, which were just these deadly killers. And yeah. You just think of these U-boats as these war machines that just go out and they destroy ships. But this actually was like, no, it's not just a, They're people. a hunk of metal, it is mm-hmm. a ship full of... 50, 60 souls. Yeah, the, the, the thing is, I mean, up to this point, a lot of war films had just portrayed the Germans as, like, evil people. Yeah. You know, they were just evil people ready to kill allies. They were going to kill Richard Attenborough and John Wayne and anybody that stepped into Germany during World War II, they were just going to kill. Then Daz Boot comes along and it's like, no. These are actual people who've served the German army for years and then Hitler takes takes control and has this, has this good plan, you know, let's send these U-boats out. They were brilliant uh, works of technology at that point. But at the same time, they had their problems. And you see it, you see the problems in this film. You know, from yeah. that harbour sequence, the, as they're walking down, you're seeing all the ships being put together and refitted to be sent back out for another patrol. And they're just like, we've got a new, uh, we've got a new rotor. And they're so happy because at least they're not going to get stuck out in the middle of the ocean for yeah. hours on end. But... Some some of the scenes in this film. I mean, th- there's th- there's th- there's a scene where they're being chased by the destroyer in the heavy seas. Ah no, a destroyer coming straight at us. Clear the bridge. Aye, aye, Captain. When the film wants to build up tension, yeah. it it really, really captures it. Because of that claustrophobic kind of tension, yeah. the silent running, the stormy weather, the 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 filth and the frustration that yeah. you know that's yeah. enveloping them. And then obviously when you know, there's a couple of times before that first destroyer where they're they they're ready to fight. Yeah. They want to test themselves in action <laughs> because, you know, the ship is filled with, you know, fifteen year old kids mostly. Yeah. And but you know they're like we're gonna die but we want to fight we want to see what's going on we want to do it you know. and you know several times you know there's no engagement and then when that uh, you know when they finally get a chance to get attacked you know they have to turn tail and then they're getting hit <laughs> with the depth charges oh. and when they're sinking to try and you know get beneath the depth charges and you cut to the shots of the submarine and you see them explode and you see that submarine shaking and it cuts to the internal part yeah and you see the rivets exploding. You see the crew, you see how terrified the, they the are. The sound of just, just hearing the, the thing crumple from the outside. Uh, and I cannot imagine how they must have felt in those times. I can't. Yeah. You're, in, you're in a cough in it. It's like yeah. you, you're getting you're scared shit side yeah. to side. And this is, you, there's no way out. The you're, captain you're turns around and says, Now it gets psychological, friends. Then it balances with the with the comedy. I mean, there's that one scene where the guy goes comedy? to the yeah, there is comedy. There's a guy, who, there's a sailor who goes to the doctor to get checked out, <laughs> and um, uh, spoilers, he he's got crabs. But you know, we're talking you know nineteen forties medicine, so he just pulls down his pants, and the doctor pulls out a magnifying glass <laughs> and just goes, "Yep, crabs." And it's, then you see six more guys all in the all line because the they probably slept with the same woman. <laughs> Oh. Oh. You dirty little boy, crabs. <laughs> like I said, it, it balances, and I mean, after the destroyer part, you know, they they do manage to escape. They they go to refuel. 
and them walking aboard that ship and then you've got you do, the ship is immensely clean you know all the other german officers are all they've looking had it nice. run for months yeah they they all the other german uh, officers are all in their uniforms all smart dress you know they've got champagne they've got food and then the crew of the u96 walk on blacked hairy you know they just look like they've been through hell and they have at that point yeah. yeah and that's then you know at a crucial point in the story where they're told that you know where the captain is given like a triple encoded dis- you know, encryption <laughs> yeah. and basically germany are ordering their sub to go straight through the mediterranean seven miles from coast to coast a bit narrow here eh? yeah, the british dockyards the only ones the british have in the western mediterranean so they are very heavily defended. Straight through enemy lines. Yeah. And, you know, got, do God knows what on the other side. Well, but it was... Through Gibraltar. The Strait of Gibraltar. Yeah. Which is heavily defended. Insane. Exactly. Like seven miles across, so, heavily defended, like you say. It's really shallow as well. So it's, it's insane for a submarine to do that. And the but height of war. But yeah. That, but that's but what they the ordered. The captain, you know, the way the captain and the actor takes that information, you see it register in his eyes. Yeah. And he has to tell his crew the mission. A place will be crawling with patrol boats. Anything that floats will be on the water. And this is where we have to go. That's the situation. But he has to tell them and give them hope that they're actually going to do it. And he yeah. explains this trick maneuver that's going to see them through. Move in under darkness. The surface. We'll see if he can slip through the cordon. As near to Gibraltar as we can get. And let ourselves drift through. Clever trick, Captain. Obviously, it, it comes to that that huge action sequence yeah. where, you know, there are battleships firing across the skies are dark with you know with fire and mortar shells. Yeah. And you watch that sub going, and uh, oh. uh, the action sequences in Das Boot are phenomenal. Even though I mean, even though it's an you know early eighties film, yeah, it still stands the test of time yeah. for those action sequences. Completely agree with they, you. There. They blow me away every time I watch it. I mean, you compare it to other films. You, you've got your Saving Private Ryan. I mean, I I put that boot on about the same pedestal as Letters from Iwo Jima. I mean, it just tells you the other side of of the war. You know, yeah. they were just normal people going out to do their duty to fight fight for their country, and you know, people people were killed, but. In a lot of war movies, it's the horror on the the actors' faces who they're playing. You know, realizing what they are doing to other people and what other people are going to do to them. I mean, the 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 fight sequence with the battleships and the yeah. the, the the cargo ships. You know, they hide under the water for six hours. That's a long time. Just sitting there, completely silent, listening to this ping yeah. going above them hearing death charges exploding nearby uh, yeah. hearing reports of you know other subs that are too far away for you to get to help or yeah. when they're engaging in combat and they're too far away and they want to get in the fight it's it's the only film I feel that I've actually felt for every other every person you know yeah. I, the, you, you have you have the captain who you know is just trying to keep his men alive but then you've got Lieutenant Werner the, the war correspondent he's just taking pictures so that he can stick in a magazine but then seeing what war is like, he's changed. He's a changed man. Yo- Johan the Phantom, the guy in the <laughs> engine room, oh, I feel for that guy. Having to spend hours inside that one room with all that noise just... And here's Johan, our Phantom. What? Well, Johan, everything in order? Well, all the actors were absolutely fantastic in this. And I don't think anyone let the team down on the acting side. Obviously, we don't speak German, so it, we, we can't tell if that's like played or not. But from from my perspective, I just thought everyone just played their parts brilliantly. And it yeah. really it absorbs you into the story. And yeah. like you said, yeah. you start to feel for them and you, you get attached the, to them. You feel for the ship as well, don't you? 
yeah the, yeah, the ship yeah. yeah I mean you have the captain and his love for his ship as yeah. well anyway and you know okay here's one of the big things about uh, Das Boot is that originally it was conceived as a TV series and so um, mm. you know filming went over you know a year long on yeah. the production um, but obviously you know they eventually released it as a movie um, but a few years ago uh, a director's cut was released and by Wolfgang Peterson as well and yeah. so you now have uh, an extended cut, which is about five hours, I believe, <laughs> ne- nearly in length. <laughs> yeah. And that's the version I've just finished watching as well. So it almost felt like uh, the precursor, if you will, to the Band of Brothers, you know, that, nice. you know, yeah. serialized where they had, you know, previously on. And so you got to watch these characters. And what this extended cut did was just show you more scenes with the rest of the crew. Yeah. So it didn't just focus on, you know, your primary cast. It actually focused on the rest. So... Depending on what you're in the mood for, or you know, uh, maybe you've got a sick day, and then you've got the time to watch the entire thing. But it is a real investment to get through. But that doesn't take anything away from the two-hour version, well, the, because the film, that yeah. still just condenses spectacularly all of the things that are just ex- fleshed out yeah. in the other versions. So. Well, I was going to bring this up because I watched the director's cut, which was three and a half hours, and I think it's both its biggest strength because it really gets you involved with the story, and you're really bought buy into it yeah but it's also its greatest weakness because it'll put off a lot of people because they don't yeah. want to sit down and watch a three and a half hour it's film a, a, about a bunch of men in a submarine <laughs> see that's strange because i watched the, the the two hour movie and mm. i i kind of knew that the extended the extended version would just have more of the crew but watching the film itself i i worried about the crew but i just wanted more of the action you know the action sequences were Definitely on par- on top for a, a, a film. <laughs> you can't use the other toilet because it's got food in it. It's like, oh, really? <laughs> Get those bananas off that map, off that map screen. Yeah. And you've seen a sign above it. It's just a picture of an ass. <laughs> yeah. Here we have the can. Uh-huh. Just one for 50 men. Oh. The other's full of provisions. First we have to think about eating, then the end product. It's logical, no? <laughs> that's, that's it. When you're following the camera up and down the length of the submarine, you know, you just feel, you feel like you're there. Oh, every time they dive... Everyone oh. has to rush to the front of the submarine. And yeah. You've got that car Balance. angle just following them. And yeah. It's like, ah, get through, get to the front. Yeah. And then everyone's diving forward and it just zooms out. When, they, when, like they, when, they were, when, they, when they sunk down to get away from the destroyer, just hearing that ping, I, I looked at the timer and I realised there was still like 45 minutes left of the film left. But I still had the feeling that the thing was just going to crumple and explode and they were just going <laughs> to die right then. But I was just like, no, just stick with it, stick with it. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, favorite scene, Ian? Ah, uh, see, see, it's not my favorite scene. I'll just like to say that right now. It's my most memorable scene because the scene is quite harsh. It's it's the scene where they've just come up after six hours after the battle sequence, and they're watching the fuel ship on fire, and the captain, for as an honor towards the ship, decides to fire a torpedo to break its back and to sink it, and then once he's fired it they notice all the sailors jumping off the side of the ship and just the looks on the crew of the U-boat's faces realising that, you know, they've just killed a bunch of men. But well, that's their duty, you know. They were frustrated as well that their allies had not come to rescue them. They were like, yeah, they'd given it. them enough time. That's it, you know, one guy was crying, another guy, the, the Lieutenant Warner just didn't want to take pictures, the captain's screaming at them. Yeah. And you could hear the screams of the sailors to yeah. pick them up. They're swimming towards us. Captain? Both engines back two thirds. We can't take prisoners, you know that. Like I said, it's not my favourite scene. It's my most memorable. memorable. Because when I think yeah. of Daz Boot now, I'll remember that scene. Yeah. Yeah, it was a really hard-hitting scene. Favourite yeah. scene, John? Um, 
I think personally my favourite scene was uh, it was I think it was in the middle of sort of the depth charge scene the first one yeah and um, the Phantom he's panicking basically um, and he wants to get off and just the interaction between him and the captain I just it really hit home because I was I, yeah. I put myself in his shoes and I was like I could I, would, I could yeah. actually be that guy if I was in that submarine I would be like I want to get out of here Get back to your battle station. Right now. It really explores the psychology of, you know, the people breaking and basically, yeah, and just walking away from the post just because they're mentally broken yeah, under, under, the, really under the pressure. Fever. Absolutely. I order you, Johan. <laughs> Uh, which leads on to actually my, uh, yeah, not necessarily favourite, um, yeah. but most memorable sequence is um, uh, it's it's a point in time when they are they've taken on water. The sub is sinking. They've taken too many hits, yeah. and they're at the bottom of the ocean, near enough. On the shelf. On the shelf, yeah. yeah. And uh, the power's out, engines out, you know, life supports out. They're on oxygen reserves, and they're all um, sat around. You know, so you know the odd engineer is still working, but most of them are just kind of sat there, just, just waiting, just waiting to die. And it's those last few conversations. Um, again, I'm not sure if this scene was in, you know, some of the yeah, other versions. Yeah. Um, but it's uh, where the photographer is talking to the captain, and he's just like, you know, all this time I just, uh, I don't want to die alone. Even though they're all, they're all together, they still all feel alone individually in what they're experiencing down there. All for the fatherland, oh God, just empty words. It's not the way they said it all, is it? I just want someone to be with. The only thing I feel is afraid. And uh, it's it's height it's a heightened moment in the film where it's just you feel that you know the fatigue yeah. and the desperation and the determination to still get their asses out of there. <laughs> And it's so uh, it, it's so engrossing. It's yeah. a five-hour film. You've, you've been living it with them. Yeah. You watch them grow big. <laughs> exactly. You watch them age. And then <laughs> God put this across them. that stage. Yeah. Uh, it's, yes, uh, I highly recommend Das Boot. It is one of the best war movies ever made. And uh, it really shows the other side of the conflict yeah. in a way that most hor most uh, war movies, uh, you know, shy away from. Yeah, I mean, I... I I, I I couldn't recommend this film enough. If you if you don't watch war movies, you, you won't you won't get that speak. But if you're a fan of war movies and you've seen you've seen your same part of Ryan, your Apocalypse Now, and you just you want a different side, watch Daz Boot. It might actually make you feel for the other for for, for the other side. You know, and, and you you will also definitely feel for a submarine crew anyway. You know, stuck in that watch tiny little tin can. <laughs> listening to the pop rivets go it's just ah oh, just a summer yeah I'm gonna put myself out I'm gonna say this is actually my new favourite war film really yeah I so thoroughly enjoyed it and I think if you give it the time if you actually get involved and you you just really like sit down and actually give it your full attention you'll you'll love it as well well, we say love it. I mean, no, you will love it. You, you'll, def <laughs> you'll definitely it's, enjoy it's it. It's an incredible film. It's Absolutely such incredible. an experience. Mm. It's it will haunt you and stay with you for for quite a while. Yeah. I really do think. Absolutely. Hi right, guys, thanks for watching. Off the shelf reviews.
on in, the more the merrier. <laughs> the cabs got you too! Oh, darling, that's divine. 